Well, here is a famous arrangement, or I should say famous song, arranged by who knows who, because again it's not specified, but it's published by Alfred and somebody else, uh, of Over the Rainbow. Okay, here we go. So right away I already marked it in, big jump in the left hand, like that, so stop and check. same thing happens here you want to jump and land probably with finger five although some people prefer I prefer finger three on black keys because look black keys are short finger three is long powerful so actually Chopin uh, often preferred to teach that way if you're striking a low uh, black key in the left hand just use finger three I think Chopin Maybe, maybe I'm mixing it up. No, it doesn't really matter. If you prefer five, that's fine too. There's something nice about both solutions. With five, it feels like you're not going as far down. But in any case, uh, what I would recommend is if you are going with five, you actually do this. Right, maybe I'll delete and do it again. Because that way it teaches you to feel the octave. That as opposed to just five, right? And the thumb is hanging out, who knows where. Even if you do three, I would use the octave as a reference for the thumb. All right, so there is that, and there's the arrow jump if you need it. Something like that. Anyway, the point I'm trying to really reiterate is every time you've got the pedal down, and you've got some long note, and then you have to play in some other part of the keyboard with the same arm, it's an indication that those are jumping notes, those are staccato notes, not play and then forget about it, right? It's play and jump. Boom. Play and jump. And then here, same thing, you would play this G and adjust your position to whatever it is on the next part of the... Something like that, right? That's what you want to practice on all these last notes of some position before some other position sufficiently far away. All right, in the right hand. big fan of this finger in solution towards the very end I'll circle it the reason is that it is comfortable in isolation but I do have to do a big switch over in my right hand so if you look at my right hand in this last measure uh, so it's 2-5 right and then I have to get my second finger over the F sharp wall and then put it on F to be able to play this F and E flat a lot of stuff that Kind of makes it awkward. So instead, I would recommend put three on G. It's a little more awkward, perhaps. I mean, I get it. It's not ideal, but then it completely eliminates the need to jump over the F sharp black key wall with finger two. All you have to do is adjust the position of the thumb for the last E flat. And again, that's a reason to start this piece inside the keys. By the way, I just did a video on another E flat major piece. Here is an E flat major piece, lots of thumbs on black keys. So therefore just expect that to be the norm, not that. Now, do you wanna start with three on G since that's where we have to end up? Maybe not. It's perfectly reasonable to start with two, four, three, four, but then instead of using that second finger that's already on top of G, anticipate what's about to happen and do this. Right? As you play the final B flat, right here, you make the adjustment. Let me go ahead and use my highlights, so let's call it indigo. On the indigo line, make sure this happens. Now, of course, start with the thumb on D, and so I will put it here. Yeah, kind of at the beginning of the piece, make sure thumb is on D. And 
then big jump. So you're basically readjusting on the indigo highlight two and three. Boom. And you might say to me, well, it's kind of the same thing as before. You are uh, having to jump over the F-sharp wall. And I say to you, yes, but you are about to play some difficult chords, right? A lot to negotiate in the right hand alone in that final measure. It's a little easier to do the jump while you're just playing single notes. But indeed, if you find yourself thinking, you know what? just adjusting the third finger like that between G and A flat is so much easier, then let's go ahead and do that. Let's put the third finger right at the beginning uh, instead of that two, and then you're set. You can start with this position. All the fingers are ready except you need to move the three like this, and then you'll have to adjust the thumb like this. I think that's much easier than doing a big readjustment uh, like at that indigo highlight. You just at indigo all you do is move the third finger back to G. All right, so that hopefully takes care of the first line. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. I mean, I didn't go through all my usual backwards practicing, so you can watch some other videos of mine to get how to do that. But uh, this final measure of the introduction with all these... I really need to tune my piano. Well, I can't, I have to ask my friend. Logical fingerings, I kind of like it. Se seems, to, seems to come from the right place. Uh, it doesn't feel too physically awkward, so good. Let's stay with that in the right hand and then in the right, in the left hand. Now, it's possible to play that final B flat with two, and the reason is, well, before I say something stupid, let, yeah, let me check. I think I think it makes sense. Look, I'll show you. So two here, and let's highlight it yellow. No, it's a little off. All right, two. Then we'll play the E flats with five. Just trying to play ahead in, in the left hand. Yeah, I think I have a good solution. So five on this note here instead of four, and then that's all formulaic. Uh, you have one ready to play that C. Yeah, you can see I'm labeling those notes as I go. Now on the next line, I just adjust the thumb, play that D in the left hand, and then I think playing a one, that idea. So you have E flat and then you put one here and then you re-extend down to maybe four, yeah. Actually the full octave. Anyway, we'll get to it in a second, uh, but let, let's go back to this final measure of the introduction. And that's kind of, it, it shows why sometimes you want to look ahead, not just look behind when you're deciding on finger choices. All right, so that's it. And then no, no adjustments necessary, you just stay in position for the left hand. No need to do much jumping in the right hand, so that's nice. All you're really needing to do, and I'll highlight it or I'll, I'll mark it, I guess, with these squares or rectangles, right? Uh, here it is. As you're striking those single notes with three, make sure you instantly adjust the position of the octave. And then as you play the octave, a little adjustment in the third finger, like that. All right. So it makes it a little more cerebral perhaps when you're practicing at first, but once you put in those foundational motions, it makes this very easy. Now here, the only thing you need to do is the thumb adjustment. So let me put that right here. But that again shows how important it is to play everything inside the keys. Some of you might have the tendency to do, to do this, look. Right, because it's so nice to play the white keys on their edges instead of right here. But then, 
back inside right away. It doesn't make sense. So just do that. Stay close to the black keys with the thumb, even as you play the GG octave. And then it's a very simple adjustment for the four note chord. Yeah, all right. Finally, let's start the song. Again, how much pedal? Maybe a little bit. I don't know. Full down. It kind of works both ways, you know, it depends on how you want to interpret it. A little more dry or with a lot of resonance, a lot of atmosphere. Try out both ways. Now, in this, the first measure is very simple because you're in position in both hands, you just press the keys down. Now, I have this desire to stay with fingers four and three on the B flat and A flat. I don't know, it just seems to make sense. I know they're not as strong as three and two, but then I have to do something weird with my thumb or second finger is in is let, let's try that in fact i might rethink the whole thing what if we move right away to five just an idea Again, you're using weaker fingers, but stuff will come up in this arrangement where you will need to use them a lot. So, how about this? We actually do the grace note with 5-4. Four. 4-4. Four, four. Then there is no struggle. 5 here. And then 2 is a very easy reach. There's a way to do it ahead of time. Yeah, I would do this. I honestly would. While you have the long B flat, and I'll highlight it with orange. While you have the long B flat, swing the fingers over. Uh, where am I swinging it over? So, for, uh, right now, two is probably on F before the orange. But as you strike that five, and then the orange happens put two on E flat and of course three on F and four on G. So you're really readjusting the four fingers during the long note and that totally takes care of the rest of this passage into the next line. So I think that solves so many problems that's worth considering. So four, uh, the orange highlight mean, means swing these fingers over like that. Four, three, two. Right. The thumb should rest on D right away. So here, just before you start the melody, the main verse, put the thumb on D, like that. Then swing over the, the long fingers on the orange, and then, uh-oh. I stand corrected. I was an idiot. We have to play F and G with fingers two and three. So forget what I said. Let's get rid of this orange highlight. I'm sure you'll run into these things as well. If you work it all out, it seems perfect. Then you, you suddenly realize you forgot about something. You have to undo all your fingerings. Happens to everybody. Uh, all right. So now the actual orange highlight should start right here. And that's where we do the swing over right here. So one more time, I'll start at the double bar line. So I'll go ahead and add all the missing position adjusters. There is the first one. After that five on C, boom. As I play the G, five goes over to B flat. And then I stay in position. That's the orange highlight. So from here, with fingers two and three, I go to here. 
that's all I have to do. And as you play two, three at the end of this line, it naturally positions the fourth finger on G. Right, and so we're set for the next line. All right, let's put it together. Let's put the whole thing together. Uh, let's see. So for, what am I doing in the left hand? Crazy. highlight right if you're using the pedal you can probably move that thumb you can sort of see it covered up by my right hand under being underneath but at some point you have to go over to D because of what's coming up here right so I'm wondering where you can do it I'll probably just wait until the very last moment right here. So the end of the line, left hand moves the thumb over, whether you play it with the pedal or not. So that kind of teaches you the ability to connect C to D, whether the pedal is down or not. In both cases, you will sustain the long B flat and C, and then finally D. Right? There might be a little gap, but no one is going to notice. Am I trying to play it wrong? And then just on that final note in the current line, move the thumb over to D. Yeah, so in addition to all these little position adjusters, uh, you have to coordinate the hands and generally sustain a beautiful melody it can take a bit of time to practice this to really get it right so i would re really recommend doing segments and doing them backwards so just as an example let's take uh, indigo highlight put it on the last line last line last note of this line and make sure that i am in the right position i'm holding the e flat in the th in the fifth finger of the left hand I'm holding the F in the third finger in the right hand. Okay, so I'm just making sure I'm in position. Fourth finger is already on G, by the way. Uh, fifth finger is still on B flat, all of these good things. Thumb is covering up what? I don't know. I would keep it on D. And you'll see the fingers of the notes that are coming up in a second. So that's where I would start. I would be on the indigo with the right position for my both hands. Cool. Now that's my goal. I step backwards and the fun begins. I hold down those notes of the uh, thin indigo. I'm basically in position. I just have to do this. Ah, maybe not quite in position because my left hand is still holding the D, uh, D, sorry, C which will hold all the way until here. So, in fact, when you practice the segment, you pl press down fifth finger, the C, the, the long hold note, the E flat, you're in position, and now all you're practicing is... It's kind of hard to see because my thumb of the right hand is kind of covering up the left hand thumb, so let's try it again. Why am I holding my right hand thumb on C anyway? I think it'll be easier if it's on, on D. Okay, con confusing myself. Thin indigo line. Holding the, C, the long hold note C. That's it. Now, that's all that's happening. All right, cool. Now let's move the, the thin starting line to here. Holding the C, holding the E flat, so all of these long notes are in the left hand. In the right hand, B flat. And again, stopping to check that this thumb transition happened. Same thing, indigo, uh, thin indigo line. All the notes that are down are down. I'm getting ready. 
you can tell that even though I'm holding the fifth finger E flat in the uh, left hand, I have to instantly go up and then bring it back down again. So go. Again. One, two, three, go. So you kind of count out maybe the general tempo in your head and then off you go. Okay, setting up, thin indigo line. Uh, uh. Okay, now let's move the, the starting line to here. You're in position, you're checking that you're always, always in position before you start. And then you think, okay, where am I going to stop? I'm going to stop right on that indigo highlight and make sure I did the position adjustment move and so on and so forth. So you kind of add a note by note until you feel you're doing all the right motions and you're in control. Because the, the, the worst thing you can do is, let's imagine I'm practicing and practicing by starting at the beginning of this measure, right? So here we go. Right, as soon as you have to start adjusting things or you forgot to, to start in the right position, panic, 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 you're doing all kinds of floppy motions, nothing is smooth. You don't want to practice like this because this just builds up that feeling of discomfort as you approach performance date. And so do it the opposite way. Make it easy. That's, I know how to do this. I know how to hold three notes and do nothing else. Yeah. I know how to make one finger motion, right? I'm here, now I'm here. These elements make up the tapestry, but until you start with each element in isolation and then put two elements together just to make sure, yep, they fit well, I know how that's done, you can't really put the whole tapestry together, right? It just falls apart right away. So take your time, study it carefully, and uh, time will be productive. All right, so the third line out of four on this page. So, firstly, instead of that two on D, I would suggest one and then two and then three, followed by one, two, and one, two. Now, again, the, these are not what I'm saying is not cast in stone. You can definitely say, hey, you know, I actually prefer to go two, three, and then five, and then that whole thing. I just generally like these spread out, stretched out positions because they train you for so many other pieces that you have to play. Pieces that are both easier and harder than this arrangement. Either one five there, or, or again, for reasons that you'll see in a second or in a few minutes, one four is actually better, I think. But also in the left hand. So let's do the big motion right here. Yeah, because right after we strike this E flat in, in five, I would suggest that motion. Oh, but that of course implies using some pedal. Yeah, you'll have to use pedal occasionally. This arrangement can start out drier, but as you get into more involved uh, piano textures, sort of bigger chords all over the register of the keyboard, yeah, bring that pedal down. And then change right here. Just do it. All right, well, at least that helps us to know what, we, what we're doing. Right, so that red pedal line pretty much takes care of a lot of binding of harmony together. Right, so again, let's do these checkpoints. Blue, I uh, sorry, sorry, cyan highlight. All I'm doing is I'm stopping to check that the left hand jump occurred. I'm making sure my right hand position is correct. That would be another checkpoint, perhaps. Let's do green. We haven't done that for a while. Yeah. Again, maybe you want 
to scoot over a little bit so your nose is a little off center to the left. So you end up in this position uh, on the downbeat of the second measure. Again, practice backwards. Pedal is down. Change pedal as you stop. Uh, let's do the stop in checkpoint with yellow this time. Okay, just backtracking through each note. Pedal is down and now okay, just always stopping on yellow and keep backing up. That should be pretty easy. One, two, three. Yeah. One, five. No, no massive position jumps except for that green one. But I think you'll find that it now becomes a little easier for the thumb to do it automatically. Because if you start at yellow with this goal, not that, right? You don't want to be doing that on the yellow. You want to be doing that. Now, you're sort of used to it. At, at green you're already there so when you're starting on that D one two three you want to do that motion you want to get yourself into that position that you've uh, trained yourself to have all right then you keep backtracking right, and you can see that thumb keeps flicking out in the right hand and so on and so on until you basically get to the beginning of the measure And of course, at the cyan, you have to negotiate that left hand jump as well. But that gets you to the mastery of the measure right away, as opposed to, you know, again, if you do it this way. Oh, jump. Right, you, you can, if you're trying to solve every problem as you're playing, you will be stuttering through it while being kind of nervous it's just inevitable because your your brain doesn't have time to adjust to adjust to adjust it's sort of like being in a speed race before you even really know how to drive on on the track you're sort of every corner totally you know comes out of nowhere and that's why you see these cars before the race go through and study each curve very carefully until they know what to anticipate so you really need to to do that uh, of course, I've never seen the race cars kind of do the final curve before the end of the lap, then back up to the previous curve, do the final two curves to the end, the finish line, and do three curves. That never happens. They have to keep going around. But we, we can stop easily, and we can put that toy car further and further back so we can study each curve to the finish line by edging backwards. All right, so that's, that's all I have to say about this. Uh, have an line... I suggest one four. Yeah, nothing wrong with the fingering in the left hand. That's the only other possibility. Immediately stretch out f five three two so that you're st you're already in position for five two one at the end of the measure. But I think that's a bit of an overkill. I mean, you can try it. Maybe you'll like it. But I think shifting. Oh, sorry. And also, of course, I have to move my fifth finger, right? I think that's fine. So, maybe, by the way, you might even want to consider clearing the pedal here and here. Possible. You don't have to. A bit of dirt is nice in the in the context uh, of this arrangement, but if you like to have no dirt, then you do this, right? As you get into that second beat or the fourth beat, and you want to clear out that second, the interval of a second, especially that one. Yeah, lift up on that pedal. And, Clear it and it's all good. One four in the right hand because I think when you go to the next line, you can very, very easily maintain the position of the thumb where it needs to be on C, right? But 
if you start with complete oh there it is uh, okay if you start with one five on heaven now you have to readjust for one four like that you can even start on one three that could be a possibility let's try it out and then get rid of this all right kind of I think on that one two five chord I would do it as a one two four or Actually, one to five is great, so that that I like. But see that one to three on the downbeat. If we start out with one three, just at the top there, then we already have three on G. I think that's a good solution. Stretch it out. So make sure the nose is over here. Yeah, that one three I would flip over just so that we know that the bottom note is. Uh, one and the top note is three otherwise I want to kind of play it like this <laughs> three on the bottom one on top but um, yeah let's let's try that as an idea oh, I love this chord and three is right on B flat so let's hold let's change to that and I'll probably even hold three into this measure right here. Yeah, those G and C in the second measure are right under my right hand fingers, but I guess we better anticipate that jump and do this. Yeah, so Fingering wise, the rest of the passage is fine. Right, this octave single note figure in the right hand is reminiscent of the fourth measure of the introduction. Well, yeah, that's pretty, pretty much it for the first page. A couple of jumps, a couple of things to practice. Maybe just before I sign off, let's uh, label all the position changes in the first measure of this line and all the other positions that I missed you can label in your own scores so that's an important one if your th if your nose is off to the left that adjustment should be pretty easy right let's highlight it red if your nose is over here right in the center you'll feel how much tension there is in your upper arm when you do this adjustment like this. Maybe you'll want to play like this with the thumb on the white key edge, which in this case is actually okay because right then you just have to play that G, which is also a white key. So in this case, it doesn't really matter too much, but it's always a good idea to be more comfortable when you play piano. So scoot over just a tiny bit. So then the next position adjustment would be right on F. All right, so that thumb just flicks out to that G. Pedal definitely more like that, but maybe, maybe here as well. I don't know. You have that option if you use these fingerings. try with the pedal down I mean it really doesn't matter it both ways sounds nice okay so what's what else yeah. in my case my hand is big enough to position the entire first measure in the left hand perfectly but if your hand is smaller maybe I think you should still be able to do it. You'll let go of the fifth. You'll probably start out like this. Then the fifth will 
leave F, but third should still be able to reach B flat. So make sure that happens, and then maybe as you move the first finger in the right hand, you also reposition the fifth finger in the left hand. So I'll highlight it with pink. Haven't used pink yet in, in this video. Hold the B flat, yeah. So probably right after you change the pedal, if you want to change it on beat 4, you stop and you check. And both transitions happen, the thumb on G, fifth finger on E flat. Stop, and then boom. So for the final thing here, final annotation, this. It's one, five, three, or one, three, five. See, that's a possibility. You could literally do that all the way through. Let's try again. If you want that enveloping resonance around the cascading octaves in the right hand, or a little bit. You can see when, when you're watching that green pedal motion from my pedal sensor, it never really fully goes up. It's always trying to be smooth. So you, you, you never want it to, to sound like this. Too, too much thud, too much break in sound. So it's always that very smooth pedal change, even if you do clear every beat. Something like that. All right, first page done. Ask questions. Uh, if you want, I could probably get some time in this week to get the other page as well. Uh, but I need, uh, I need communities likes to see it through, I guess. All right, take care.